Great. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Drive Tune In. Today, I have an interview with Gary Vaynerchuk, where we're going to discuss social TV and how to apply uh, many things that Gary has been doing, teaching, and, and uh, writing about to uh, your television show and to your television network. So I know many of you already know Gary. If you've if you've been following anything on the social web, uh, Gary's the best-selling author of two books, Crush It and Thank You Economy. Uh, he also runs Vayner Media, which is a social media agency that helps out brands and entertainment and other spaces use the social web to reach their business goals. And also, he's a businessman himself. He he learned this not just by talking about it, but actually doing it. So, hello, Gary. How are you, Hasim? How's it going? I'm doing well. Good, man. So, I actually discovered Gary like a lot of people did. I, I saw uh, one of your interviews, and um, and the, the things that you were talking about with how to use uh, Twitter, Facebook, and, and other things like that, it, it matched what I was learning by trial and error by working at a uh, television show. Mm -hmm. So, we were just testing things out, and we were saying, wait a minute. One to one engagement, that's important. Wait a minute, uh, speaking with a human voice. And and a lot of the things that we saw, I saw you talking about. So you went from just another talking head to someone I, I really started to pay attention to. So uh, I know, I, I hope that, well, I know that many people who are watching this will have the same experience. If they've just heard your name and haven't really understood the angle that you're coming from or the results that you've uh, uh, helped brands with. I hope through this interview that people will gain the same uh, experience that I did. I appreciate it. I want to hop right into it. And these questions come from talking to my friends who work in the television industry who are maybe either skeptical of social media or are just plain confused by it. And I want to just come from that angle, Gary. Sure. These things. So the, the first question is, often when you hop on uh, a, a website like Mashable or, or another site that tracks uh, social media, you see all this talk about how uh, the web will destroy the television business. What's your take on that? Will the web destroy the television business like it did the, the music industry? Um, well, I don't think the music industry is killed, right, Shim? I think that, yep. you know, last time I checked, you know, two chains is making money, right? So, you know, I, I think it changed the music industry, and I think social changed television, right? Television makes its money oftentimes by selling advertisement in commercial form. In a world where there's DVRs and everybody's like, boop, 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 and that's the old school TiVo, or more importantly, when they're watching television, I'm looking at mine right now, they've got this laptop, they've got this phone, my iPad's over there, they've got an iPad. Am I really consuming that commercial? The answer is no. Not to, if you look at the recall numbers from consumers on commercials today compared to 1964 or 2000, they're abysmal. And that's because we're so distracted, we've all gone ADD. And so as brands start figuring out that racket, they're not going to want to spend their money on that commercial. It's going to change the world, right? And so I think that what's going to happen is it's going to change the way they have to make money. If you look at the way that artists are making money now, product placement in videos, uh, digital experiences. Uh, we've gone old school, right? I think TV is about to go old school. Music went old school. Music went back to selling the way it did in the 1950s and 40s and 60s in one song, LPs, like they used to. Then we sold albums. Now we're back to, you know, how do you buy music? You buy one song, you know, unless it's your favorite, favorite artist and you're buying the whole album. Same with television. 1940 to 1960, brands integrated, right? This show is brought to you by GE and Mary Tyler Moore went to her GE toaster and then we went to commercials. I think we're going back to native ads to a different world and so television's not going to be killed. It's going to be enhanced um, but the cream is going to rise to the top. You can't suck and win as much as you used to <laughs> and most of all we're going to have to storytell and make money in a different way. So, so you're saying that uh, social media will, will help uh, uh... Uh, it will make t television better since uh, shows can't suck and stay on for as long? Well, no, I think social television is going to make it better for brands. I, I think that what's going to be interesting is that brands are going to get more value for the money that they're putting into commercials and television, and that in itself is going to bring more money to the platform, which is ultimately going to bring more money to the content producers. So I think this is a good thing. Anytime when 
bad stuff gets fixed, it's good. Commercials, in my opinion, in 2012 world are just not that good anymore. They'll get fixed and we'll have a much better product for consumers, for the brands, and for the content producers. Excellent, thanks. So something that caused a lot of uh, discussion this year was that last year uh, we were able to really measure the uh, social media talk around uh, new shows that were going to premiere. Now about, I think about four of the, the ten sh uh, shows that were most talked about uh, were canceled into the season. Uh, I think the number one show that was talked about was canceled soon after the Playboy Club. So it, it caused a lot of talk about whether, you know, the social t the social media really work for television. What, what's your take on that? You know, I think that's valid data, right? I, mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I think people are confused about talking about versus talking about in a good way. I don't know about you, and I don't—I didn't look at the data, so I don't want to answer out of my ass. But a lot of the talking about about Play-Doh, Playboy show that was on was it was shit. Am I allowed to curse on your show? Sure, sure. Um, so you know, just because a million people said something about a show, if they said it was crap, you know, that's a bad thing. So listen, I don't think that the most people that click in that check into Get Glue means that there's going to be ratings. I don't think that the Bluefin data that says most people were talking about leads to data. One of the things that I don't think that is the reason that that's happening is because I'm not so sure that Nielsen's ratings are that good. I don't know if the, you know, before we start debating whether the social data is good, what about if the fact that if Nielsen's rating with only 5,000 boxes in the world isn't actually accurate? I mean, there's been long chitter chatter in, in television circles that Nielsen ratings aren't right, that are off kilter, that, you know, they have punch card answers to some people, that it's a joke. And so, you know, listen, First of all, we have to figure out the sentiment properly about the chatter. And second of all, I think there's a healthy debate to know why the Nielsen ratings are so right. Now, I know it's accepted in television and it's the norm and I'm not going to uh, argue against it, but do I think a show is being watched more than Nielsen says based on the actual Twitter data? I do. I think that's more real. It's more public. It's more transparent. And I just believe it more. I just do. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a weird argument where we accept one uh, piece of data as true and then measure it against other pieces of data and ask for uh, you know social media data to jump through hoops that we don't uh, put other data through. It's really incredible. One one hundred percent because we've accepted and we've accepted that racket, and I think that's a mistake. Yeah, definitely. So uh, another big conversation that's happening now is apps versus content. So okay. creating an app. A mobile app, Facebook app, has become easier. Um, you know, it's easier to kind of get the talent or or hire an agency or, or someone else to do it. Um, so there's a there's a big conversation about where should a television network spend their money in apps or content, and that's a really broad question. But I think people are approaching it from uh, kind of those two spaces. Uh, where do you fall on, on this uh, debate, for, uh, apps versus content? Um, I think both. Uh, you always have to have media mix. I still believe in commercials and outdoor media and print and radio. I just think they're not as valuable as they used to be. Apps are expensive. Um, so I, I hate building something and then spending money to drive people towards it. I feel like you pay twice. I think creating content on the social web, creating content for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram has a lot of value because there's no cost in the infrastructure. Then you just have to do the, you know, it's like you don't have to pay for the building. You just have to design the room. That's a good value versus building the building, marketing the building, getting people in and designing the room. So I, I lean towards micro content more so, and that means content for the social web because um, I, I think that you own it. I think people are always worried, like, we don't own Facebook. I'd rather own the app. That's my app. But you own the relationship, and that's all that matters. Where you make the relationship doesn't matter. You could have made your best friend not by living next door, but meeting them on a cruise, on a vacation, and stay friends forever. I think people are missing the context of that you're owning the relationship, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. I mean, I had... 20,000 friends on Foursquare before I ever signed up because all the relationships I made on Twitter and Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. So right. I think people are missing that issue. Right, definitely. I, I know that you, uh, your agency, VaynerMedia, represents a couple of television brands and a couple of entertainment brands. Yes. I know, I know that you're looking at this space. Is there something that you see that as a whole the space is missing or, or yes. perhaps doing wrong? Yep. 
What would that be? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to go for the pause for dramatic effect. I think that these television networks and media companies in general are re- not realizing that they can monetize the micro content itself. That the same way they're programming for the television show, they should be programming for social, right? Hashim, I think that they should be programming. I think that they could have a follow-up show on Facebook. It doesn't have to be video. It could be pictures of clips and what have you. And that could be brought to you by Mountain Dew. That could be brought to you by, you know, a, a potato chip company or an airline. And so I think they're so stuck on making their money. They become religious about where they make their money. I don't give a rat's ass where I make my money, right? Right, right. I was making my money selling wine. Now I make my money selling books and speaking and consulting and I'm going to make some product next. And so, you know, where do you, making, becoming religious on where you make your money is a very good way to go out of business. They should realize they can make money by sponsorship against the content they produce. They just don't have the skill sets for that yet, but they should start thinking about it. Excellent. Gary, thank you so much. I think you really gave people a framework to think differently about what they're, they're doing. If, if someone wants to uh, follow up with what you're doing, yeah and keep in contact with you and, and what you're speaking about, where you're speaking, what you're so, writing, where can they, thank you. what can they do? So the interesting thing is usually I would say facebook.com slash Gary, mainly because I want to brag that I have that URL, uh, twitter.com slash Gary V G A R Y V E E. But recently, just this week, and I haven't even really announced it, I've switched my website to Rebel Mouse. Mm-hmm. And so I'm very hot on this site called rebelmouse.com, so hot that I invested in it before, right before it closed, thank God, so I want to fully disclose that. It aggregates all your micro content. So if you go to GaryVaynerchuk.com right now, it's actually aggregating all this micro content that I believe in so much. And it's taking the videos and the clips and the audio and the pictures that I'm doing on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest and, and Tumblr and all these things and it's aggregating it. Actually not Tumblr yet, but so I'm really excited about that. So ironically and probably rightfully so, finally GaryVaynerchuk.com is probably the best place to follow me. Excellent. And I didn't tell you this, and, and you didn't actually say this, but I completely vouch for Rebel Mouse. Um, I'm actually changing my homepage, HashimWarren.com, to Rebel Mouse to bring together all of this micro content I'm creating it just that makes people sense. can't see. So it's, it's really incredible it's service. Good. Yeah, I agree. Gary, Gary, thank you so much. I know that Thanks. people were helped from this interview. I really, really appreciate it. I, I appreciate you, man. I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks.